I want to talk a little bit about Case or Case One. In essence, we know who Case is, right? William Case Cauldron, that's his full name. We know that he is affiliated with the CIA, with Rogue Black Ops 1. We know that he works with Woods. We know that he works with Troy Marshall. We know that he's part of that team. He's a trusted ally of these men. And he's also the main player character for us. He's the main guy that we control almost throughout the entire campaign of Black Ops 6. You know, minus a couple switches here and there, but we mainly play as Case. But Case Case has a dark side to him. Case has a second personality almost. Throughout the story, especially towards the beginning parts of the story of Black Ops 6, we notice that when we say certain words like cradle, like Gusev, like Pantheon even, Case like kind of flares up. Something goes on in his mind, something is triggered that he starts to see this like blurs and it almost snaps him out of what he's currently doing, whatever he's assigned. So it kind of starts to, you know, lay the foundation for what's to come. We find out later in the story, around the time that we rescued Russell Adler, we have a story mission called The Cradle. Now in The Cradle, we have to go to Iraq. We have to help some special air service members. And then after we complete all that, we go down Saddam Hussein's palace where he received a delivery or a special gift from Pantheon. It was something that Saddam Hussein wanted and Pantheon sent it to him. And so Adler, Troy Marshall and Case head under the palace and find this box, this bioweapon box. And it's called the cradle because it has some documents next to it. Now, when you say the word cradle, you know, Case starts to flare up a little bit. But the point of the cradle is that it's a weapon, some sort of weapon. And we know that a Russian scientist named Gusev was the one who basically made it. And so we fast forward a little bit and we find out what the cradle is exactly. And it's some sort of hallucination agent bioweapon that distorts the person's mind. Whoever inhales this gas, this cradle, it turns them aggressive. It like messes with their mind. It fills them with fear. And maybe it's used to manipulate a person and command them 100%. It like gives you command of that person. And you can dictate them and tell them what to do and when to do it. That's basically, I think, the consensus of what the cradle is. After the cradle mission, we have some information on where this cradle bioweapon was basically created, where it was made. And so we head to Kentucky, where they have this advanced technologies and applications facility where they created this bioweapon. And I believe if I'm not wrong that this was part of a CIA operation. It was like overseen by the CIA and they were testing this weapon to use it in the future. But I believe that they got too aggressive with it. I think that maybe Pantheon which was a division of the CIA, was overseeing the advanced technologies and applications facility in Kentucky, but their methods were so aggressive and things got out of hand that the CIA disavowed Pantheon and they shut down the Cradle Bioweapon program. At least that's what it was. But it seems that one of the persons that was tested in this bioweapon was Case. And Case actually, if I'm not mistaken, volunteered himself to be a test subject for the cradle. Now, we don't know what Case was before he volunteered, but I would assume that Case probably served in the military. Case probably was a CIA operative and he saw this uh, new thing that they were doing, maybe to like increase shooting effects, maybe it increased strength, maybe it increased speed. Not, not, not like a super soldier serum like we saw Captain America but something similar to that maybe it'll elevate you a little bit and maybe that's what he was sold and he thought well i'm a cia agent i do all these things maybe i could use an edge on the field and so he volunteered himself and he was the first human trial that the advanced technologies facility did for the cradle but what happened after that after he volunteered we do not know exactly we get hints and bits when case is separated from marshall and savari dumas in the facility as they are climbing up the facility case falls all the way down and he needs to find his way out of the lower levels and get back to the top. But he inhales some of the leftover cradle, some of the leftover gas that remained in the facility from years prior. And when he inhales that, all these visions and all this fear comes back to him. And we get a little bit more information on case. It's fantastic to see you again, case one. How have you been feeling? A friendly reminder that most of the facility is off limits to patients. I hope you understand. Welcome back, Case. 
Again, we already established who he kind of was, but Case was a test subject there, and Case has a tattoo on his left arm with the Pantheon logo, and Case started to hallucinate zombies and monsters, and maybe that was the fear that it induced from him, but there was also a voice in his head that he could hear extremely well after he inhaled the gas. We don't know who this voice is. Some people have suggested that it might have been Jane Harrow or somebody similar like that, because it's a woman that's speaking to him, but we don't really know that for sure, at least yet. We know that this woman was telling Case that he was special, that he was better than the other test subjects and all this weird stuff. Now, this female voice also helped him get through the facility, helped him find the key cards that he needed and walked him through every boss fight and all of that stuff. So when he finally found the key cards that he needed, he was able to take the elevator back to the top floor, find Troy Marshall and Savati Dumas. But before he reached them, the voice in his head told him that he needed to remember that he was never allowed to discuss Pantheon and he was never allowed to discuss the Cradle. Remember your training, Case One. You can never speak of the Cradle program or the Pantheon division. Never. Doing so could have unpredictable consequences. What I find very interesting is that Case isn't like completely brainwashed. Case kind of knows what's going on. And I think that when he fell in there, he remembered things that he was supposed to forget. Because after this, we get a conversation with Woods and it's an optional conversation. And we can tell Woods, hey, I was part of this experiment for Pantheon and I was exposed to the cradle. But when you try to tell Woods that, the voice reminds you, you can't talk about it. So they basically stop you from doing so. So clearly Case has this idea of who he is and what happened and he can kind of tell that something is wrong so that's the gist of what happened with case after the emergence mission we don't really see much of case's background at all it actually kind of just dies down and we kind of forget about it until jane harrow talks to case one-on-one -on -one in private and she kind of talks to him about that because it seems that obviously jane harrow was aware of the cradle she was aware of the advanced technology facility she was one of the heads she was one of the people in charge of that facility and she probably knew Case before he took the cradle and after he took the cradle and she was probably trying to control him. You know, Jane Harrow might have put Case onto the team of Troy Marshall to keep a close eye on them. You know what I mean? It could have been something like that to use him to investigate and then maybe when Pantheon or whatever needed Case to do something, they would activate him. You know, that's another theory there, but we know who kind of Case is now. We know who our main character is. We know that he was part of Pantheon, maybe not willingly, but he was part of of the Kratos experiment, and he might be a little bit stronger than your average soldier. So there's a lot going on with Case, and there's so much lore behind him and so much stuff that we do not know of him yet. But we hear the woman talking to Case one last time at the end of the game. When Case is about to kill Jane Harrow, the woman in Case's head tells him, kill her, finish her, and so the gas starts to spread and you know, Case begins to choke uh, Jane out. But while this is happening, Jane kind of turns into like a zombie again in Case's head. So this is massive because you start to wonder, did Case really kill her? Did both Case and Jane die? Was the gas making him see things and do things? And he was never choking Jane. Maybe he was doing something else. Who knows? But we're not going to get into that specific part. The point of today's video was to talk about William Case Cauldron aka case one and really get to know him a little bit better get to know who he was now i didn't want to tell the story of case because i would have rehashed what happened in the black ops 6 story so far video that we already made but today's video was just to get to that point let's just concentrate on william case cauldron and find out exactly who he is because it was a massive massive question mark coming into the campaign now a lot of you guys in the comments and in other places like the trailer commented that you saw that case had a tattoo on his left arm that potentially looked like a Pantheon logo in the trailers. So a lot of you guys caught on way before the campaign even came out. I did not, but you guys did. And since that happened, and now that we got the campaign out and we played it, I've seen so many theories, so many cool ass theories that a lot of you guys have in the comments. So I wanna turn it over to you. What other stuff about William Case should we know Let's discuss that down below and let's continue to investigate more. I'm sure that we're going to expand our knowledge on the cradle, on William Case 1, and everything in between in the new Warzone story coming out very, very soon. <music>